Hi guys, okay so this is uh, another video just to show you my dual battery setup for use with the DJI Phantom uh, version 1 with the Zenmousse already fitted. Um, you may have already seen the video where I fit my custom FPV under tray. Uh, this is designed to take the Fat Shark Predator V2 um, or other um, uh, video transmitters, hold it nice and securely and give you the ability of holding that and mounting it around the Zenmousse. Um, the addition, uh, very similar to my previous under trays where I didn't have a gimbal, um, the addition to that is um, this little table and the idea of this little table is that we're going to use one of my uh, battery um, cages, this is designed to fit the Phantom stock battery and that is going to be able to mount on top of this we're going to velcro that down um, and we're going to have enough space to be able to fit the Fat Shark kit including the power filter a second battery and the Zenmousse on the same Phantom holding it all nice and secure nice and rigid um, and keeping it nice and white which is uh, which is an added bonus okay so first and foremost the uh, the prerequisites for the Phantom itself there's a couple of things that you're going to need to do. Um, first and foremost, um, you're going to need 25 millimeter spacers. These are 25 millimeter brass hex spacers, uh, male to female. So we've got a male thread there. We've got a female thread there. These are M3 threads, which means we can use the existing screws that came with the Phantom. Um, all we do is we replace the innermost screw on all the legs, and then we screw into the brass this. People do ask me, can I use nylon to save weight? Yes, you can, but the problem is if you um, if you accidentally turn it too far, you're going to completely screw the threads up. You're going to get a load of wobble, and if it all falls off, you're going to be in trouble. So I personally much, much prefer the solidity of these brass ones. I've used nylon. I didn't like them. I got worried it was all going to fall off at one point, and I certainly don't want that to happen with the amount of money that's involved on one of these kits. Uh, next thing you're going to want, um, obviously you're going to want to fit your, uh, your, your Zen Moose, um, get it all cabled up, I've got it running through the leg, I've made myself a custom cable um, which allows me to take the input, um, sorry the output from the camera into the upgrade board. Um, the other thing that I've done personally, uh, again optional, is the upgrade board didn't come with an aux power cable, I actually soldered this onto the uh, battery um, side of it, so it's uh, just taking the, um, the, the, the 12 volts from the, the 3S straight from the board. The other thing that's going to be important for you to do um, is, if you can see, the battery compartment. You're going to want to cut, using a Dremel or something, um, cut the sides off your battery cover. Um, you'll see why that's necessary later on. Okay. So that's all there. The other parts that you're going to need, you're obviously going to need your video transmitter. Um, you're going to need a parallel cable. Make sure it's a parallel cable. This allows us to plug two batteries into the Phantom. Um, you're then going to need yeah, the uh, the power filter. This is the um, this is the power filter that came with the Fat Shark Predator V2. This is the 2S and 3S version meaning they've got a 2S and a 3S balance port. Um, Fat Shark, without um, me knowing about it, actually brought out a 4S version, which I believe is shipping with some of the newer um, versions of this. I have now finally got a 4S version of the, uh, of the filter housing. Um, so you're going to want to get a filter housing for this. Don't have to. You can mount it with Velcro if you want. This keeps things nice and neat, makes it all removable, fits nicely. Okay, and then of course the other things you're going to need are a bit of Velcro. Three three pieces of Velcro, um, they don't have to be ridiculously long and you're probably going to end up trimming them to size anyway, so make sure they're, they're kind of full lengths where you can actually do some trimming. Right, so first thing is first. What we want to do before we start fiddling around with the Phantom is we want to get the tray pretty much sorted. Um, it gets a little bit fiddly, um, unfortunately neatness requires fiddliness. So. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to mount the power filter to the actual tray. Now it's important that we get the orientation of this correct for this installation. Um, because the battery is going to be sitting here, we want to make sure that the power cable is coming out left and right. Um, it doesn't really matter which way round they go, but they're going to want to go left and right. If you do it that way, you're going to have them banging into the battery. Okay, so first we take that and we will take a little bit of our Velcro. 
slot that through the provided slot and then we're going to pop that through these two slots on the side covering up my logo but never mind and we'll just pull that nice and tight okay and we can pull that fairly far back um, we don't want to completely cover up this hole um, because that's where the um, the VTX when it's all slotted in that's where the heatsink goes and that gets pretty hot so let's not cover that up okay so that's that now what we're going to want to do next this is going to go to the VTX so we're going to feed that through I put it through these little holes of the table feed that through there and then we're going to want to feed that down the back and poke it out the front of our VTX. This is just going to make life a little bit easier when it comes to actually mounting it. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is actually fit the battery cage because um, the, the, the way this works, the Velcro makes it a little bit difficult to do if it's actually fitted to the, uh, to the Phantom. So we're going to get our battery tray. We're going to get our Velcro. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the Velcro through the provided slots in the cage. One through there. One through there. Right, OK. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure the face, the, the bit that's facing the actual Zen Moose has a small amount of tab. This is where we're actually going to stick it to. And then run the Velcro underneath, ideally avoiding that cable so as not to pinch it, but it doesn't really matter if you do. Underneath the table. Okay. And then seat that down. right now this is why I suggest you have little tabs and then once you've got the little tabs as you can see just fold a tab under and then pull the velcro back up now I've got a little bit of extra velcro there that you're probably going to want to snip off otherwise the battery is going to be a bit of a tight fit in the cage um, but just for the purposes of this video we'll leave it like that so again we're going to fold this under and then we're going to pinch it up like that okay right so that is our cage nicely firm which is all good okay so next stage is going to be fitting it to the actual phantom so we're going to bring the phantom in Right then, so the power cable, that's actually going to go to the uh, power filter, so we don't need to worry too much about that. Obviously, you need to be a bit careful um, on how much cable that you've actually got. You want to make sure it can actually get round to the, uh, to the side that is required, so just bear that in mind. Uh, if you do find you don't have enough, then one of the things that I would suggest you do is actually chop it off nearer the leg and create um, a little um, power um, I call them a chocolate block, a little block connector. Maybe just do that and tape it on there. Uh, not the prettiest of things, but it does allow you to tap other things into the uh, into the battery power if you uh, if you should wish to. Okay, so the other thing that we're going to do before we actually slide it on and screw it down is we're going to take the video output cable and we're going to slide that down the back and out the front okay and then we're going to grab our transmitter make sure the cables are in the right position and we're going to slide that on and then plug in the power Good, good. Now just pull that cable tight and then we're just going to feed that back out. That back out. And there we have one 
VTX all mounted. So now, might as well put the door on. Uh, there's a little groove in the door. Um, make sure that's down at the bottom edge, so it's a nice fit. Slots on like that, and then this is where I use a little bit of garden wire, nice rigid wire, insulated. I just create a little hook, pinch it around one, through these holes. Pinch it round two. Chopped a good one. And that stays nice and firm, all ready to accept our antenna. Okay, so now it's just simply a case of actually sliding the tray on. Um, to do that, all you've got to do is just slide it back so it's just over the top of the, uh, the spheres, wait until it clears, and then you can just drop it down. And you drop it down on top of the screw threads. And as you can see, a little bit fiddly, but manageable. So, we'll take one screw, ideally do one corner at a time, don't tighten them up just yet. And this is the reason why I haven't fitted the battery as yet, is because we want to be able to get to these screws But the battery cage, once it is in place, you can actually slide the battery out of it and into it, so you're not going to need to take it off. And of course, if you don't want the extra weight of a second battery, you can just leave the battery and just fly with one. Okay. Final one. Right, and then all we've got to do is we've got to get our power to the power filter. And for that, I am going to put it underneath the table. He says. Like I say, a little bit on the fiddly side this can be. Come on, cable. This is not helped by the fact that when I created this cable I didn't actually have this designed, but there we go, right, that comes through there. And plugs into the 3S slot just there. There we go. Right, so that is everything fully wired up. Next stage is adding the battery. Okay, so all that's left is to just fit the uh, batteries. So first and foremost we're going to put the standard phantom battery in the cage underneath it. Uh, this cage is designed specifically for this battery size. Um, others will fit. Obviously check the dimensions of this first and then see whether or not your batteries are going to fit inside it. I do do a larger version which will will fit on it but be a bit careful when you're talking you know the extra weight you're not necessarily going to get any gain out of it personally i tend to use two um 2200 mah um and that will give me flight time of circa eight to ten minutes with the zen moose um which um, which is pretty reasonable you may have to tweak your uh, your, your first level voltage um to to get the maximum out of it but um if you want more details about that, have a look at my blog. Anyway, so we slide the battery into the slot till it hits the little spring. And then there's a little retaining clip that comes with the cage. You slide that in front of it. And it's difficult to see with this camera, probably there's a tiny little hole in the clip. 
and you can pass through either a bit of cable or a, um, a safety pin if you feel inclined. I've never had it fall out without it to be honest, um, it's a firm fix and actually that's a lot more solid. Um, you can mount this cage either way round, you're probably better off actually mounting it the opposite way round to the way I've done it here, but still for the sake of this demonstration it will be fine. Okay, so now we'll flip the Phantom over, and that'll be my Zemus bracket falling off, which I will move out of the way, okay. Uh, anyway, right, so parallel cable next, single end, it's going to go to the Phantom, so Second battery now, it's, uh, it, it, you need to be a bit careful on how you go about fitting this. Personally, what I tend to do is I'll slot the second battery in like this. I will put the parallel cable on there. I will then, and this is why I've mentioned those cutouts, I will then squash that cable up and close the door, which makes it nice and tight. What this then allows us to do is we can swing this side round just behind, I don't know if you can see this, I tilt it up like this. This can go actually behind this brass spacer, leaving this one available to power up to this. I won't turn it on now because I haven't got my transmitter and I haven't got my camera fixed. Anyway, they will all fit in place. Uh, you may want to cable tie it back so it doesn't get in any of your shots. Um, but that's basically it. So leaving those loose, and you can see that is all nice and rigid. I haven't actually done the screws up as I should do yet, but um, that should keep you flying for a decent amount of time.